Hi, it's me. I pierced my nose today. I don't really know exactly why I make these videos, except for the fact that they're like cathartic to me. To talk about my life and transform it into a creative nonfiction essay of some kind. But I do kind of miss how I used to make videos for myself when I was in high school. Or they weren't for myself. I made a whole playlist of YouTube videos for my ex-boyfriend when we were going to be long distance for several months. And they ended up just being like vlogs of my life. I made 95 of them because that's how many days we were going to be apart. It's cute. I know. But what's funny about that story is he never watched any of them. And so now they're just sitting in my YouTube drafts and the only person that goes back to watch them is me. Anyway, so that kind of like vlog style, just talking as if I were talking to a lover or a boyfriend or whatever is something that I kind of miss and I want videos to go back to from this time in my life, especially considering what I'm doing right now. Right now, I am trying to sketch out what I'm going to paint onto a canvas, which is portraits of me and my boyfriend's cats. You know when they, like in the olden days when they would do like portraitures and stuff of royal families and all of their children like doing something very like diplomatic and important? It would be them and like a bunch of fruit. Oh, speaking of the subject. It would be them and a bunch of fruit or them and like reading a beautiful novel or something like that. I thought it would be funny to have portraits of the cats up in our house. I mean, just look at her. That when she looks so cute in a portrait. And yes, I did say our house earlier because I'm moving in with my boyfriend. My mom said this funny thing about girls in our family being in the boyfriend era, choosing to have a long-term boyfriend over having like a spouse or like getting married. She said it like a joke and it was funny because in the past and like all the values that I grew up with were so centered around like you find the person you love and you marry them immediately. No premarital anything like, but it's just funny now that my mom is like condoning having a long-term boyfriend. Whereas like when I was growing up, that was never even an option. To move in with your boyfriend would have been like heresy. Anyway, but now I'm painting portraits of our, our cats to hang up in our house. And I thought I would bring you along and talk to you on Scripted. Part of the reason I wanted to do this too is because I was thinking about like I'm so excited to move into a new place and move in with my boyfriend and have the freedom to put up our own decorations and really make some place like just ours. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I really want to appreciate like my room and the space that I've created that's like so completely me and is not like diluted or tinted in any way by someone else. And that's not even like a roast of my boyfriend, but it's more like a, just an appreciation of this room that I put together. Like it's not clean right now, but I actually want to show you. This is my bed and the comforter that I bought for $5 at Goodwill two weeks ago. These are the pillows that I bought three years ago. My sister made the stuffed strawberry for me to put on my bed as a welcoming present to my new house. This is a stuffed animal my boyfriend got me. This is the first like non-twin bed I've ever owned. Um, the mattress was given to me by a friend of a friend and I bought the bed frame and put it together myself. And I really think that I like turned it into something unique and special and like totally me. I'm always really proud of my print wall. I've done this ever since I was a teenager. I would hang up different posters, inspirational quotes, poems, photos, all on this little collage wall. Obviously the Taylor Swift shrine. There are just so many things here that have made up my life over the last few months that are so important to me, that are full of memories and things that people have given me and it's kind of shown my like transformative nature healing from probably the worst depressive episode of my life and not to sound like the cliche of a parent but i really did move here with like the clothes on my back or whatever of my belongings would fit in my car and now i feel like it's almost overcrowded with things that make me happy which is such an accomplishment and now to look at the ephemera of my own happiness and like things that 
I picked out and I chose because I loved the look or the feeling of them. Like that's growth for me, validating my own wants and needs, knowing what I like and leaning into things that make me feel special and happy and girly. Like I think about if younger me had walked into this room, like what she would think. And she would think it's fucking awesome. She wouldn't say fuck though. It honestly doesn't look too much different than my room as a kid. An example of like why I love my life recently is, so I got this today. And like my, f my first thought after getting this piercing was like, oh man, this is gonna get in the way of me kissing. <laughs> Like, isn't that such a gift to think like the worst thing that could happen? You're getting kissed too hard and you're gonna have to find a new way to move your face around somebody else's. Yeah, but I just get excited about the smallest things. Yesterday, I was just like crying, bawling my eyes out because I saw this puddle. <laughs> That's already such a funny sentence. I saw this puddle reflecting the street lights and I was like, oh my God. Like my life is so beautiful. I just felt so myself. I was listening to the new Eliza McLam album. The way that I listen to music, I love the way I listen to music. It all sounds so cheesy and I'm not wording it right, but isn't it amazing to feel so much to be moved by light reflecting off of a puddle? And that's something I was worried about before I started Lexapro. I was like, what if Lexapro takes away my ability to feel so much and appreciate the world so much? I still get these outbursts of feeling, but they're, very rarely like debilitating me in bed for days. I feel like Lexapro gives me like a POV from up here where I can look over my emotions and choose like to feel them and feel them out and like feel them to completion. I feel like I have like foresight with Lexapro. Anyway, all that to say is I'm very happy for one of the like first times in the last few years. Okay. Here's a rough sketch of <laughs> what I wanna do in the painting. One of our cats is like very unruly, very naughty, has so much energy, very curious. Not that my cat isn't, Taro is so sweet. She's a sweetie, she's a snuggler. Whereas Tuna, the other cat, not so much. She's more of a adventurer. This is what we're working with so far. I'll update you soon. Here is what we're working with now. I mentioned earlier this whole concept of like the, the boyfriend era, the long-term boyfriend. And I don't know if it's necessarily because I have like a negative connotation with it necessarily or, or if it's like my attachment style or this or that. I mean, we've obviously come a long way with neuroscience and the way we see mental health and psychology but sometimes I feel like becoming more mainstream in some way, like a double-edged sword. On TikTok now, there's all these trends about like, what kind of face weight do you have? Where should your hair part be? Use this filter to figure out what you're gonna look like when you're old. Hate yourself, hate yourself, hate yourself. I feel like there are so many trends and there's like a version of that in the mental health community as well. Which attachment style do you have? Take this quiz to find out what kind of trauma you have. And all this stuff is really helpful, but as someone that is like mentally ill and medicated and has gone to therapist after therapist after therapist, I don't know, sometimes it just gets exhausting. Like I feel like I'm compartmentalizing all of these identities that I have or diagnosis, diagnoses without actually having it have a huge impact on my life. It's just a lot of work to be like so self-aware, to be constantly obsessing over it in some way. Anyway, back to what I, was originally saying. Um, this whole concept of like long-term boyfriend, I feel like has been taboo until like recent years. Sometimes I feel like it's hard. My anxious attachment or depression or whatever, like just kicks in. I have to like consciously work on making an effort to take care of myself and feel secure um, and not always be like bracing for impact or like testing the boundaries of my healthy relationship after being in an abusive one. There's just like lots to think about and I feel like my mind is so hyper vigilant and I'm trying to just treasure the things that are simple, secure, and happy. Like the fact that I can make this painting of our cats and he's like so excited to see it later. But it's not even about the other person, it's like about myself. Like I'm excited to make this painting and I'm excited to take care of myself and I'm getting used to the idea of like temporal love. I carry this love in my body the same way I carry the love for my family and like everything is temporary, like nothing is forever in a way. Either we break up or one of us dies. Either way, it's 
grief. Everything is just leading to grief or the recovery from grief. Life is so much grief, which is why I can't stop reading books about people whose husbands died. I found myself in the grocery store listening to Joan Didion's memoir about her husband's death. And I was thinking, this is kind of a weird thing for me to be listening to as a 22 year old who has never experienced death up close in any kind of way. Painting Taro is so easy. She's just this black blob. I don't know what it is about me, but I just cannot conceptualize that without freaking out. Like, I haven't accepted it yet that everything ends, but it's like the idea of like living forever. Like I used to get really freaked out in church, but what if I don't want to go to heaven? <laughs> I don't want to live forever. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want to live forever. I don't know if we ever do truly accept it. I mean, we spend our whole lives talking about love and talking about grief, but yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get closer to accepting that or if that's just the human experience. How can I feel secure when everything is temporary? How am I supposed to feel safe and okay if I don't know what's ahead, if I don't know what's around the bend? If I can't prepare, I can't prepare. I can't prepare anyway, it all ends. But why spend all my time pre-experiencing it before it's even happened? Why not just enjoy the ignorant bliss? That is the question, I do not have the answer yet. This is what I could get done for today, but please let me know if you would like to see the finished product, my boyfriend's reaction and how it looks in the house. Love you very much. Thank you for listening to me if you have this far. That's all for now. I'll see you soon.